A deep dive test turns into the worst submarine disaster in American history when the USS Thresher vanishes beneath the Atlantic Ocean, taking all 129 souls on board with her. What happened and what could go so wrong? What they would discover would change the way the US Navy constructs and operates its submarine fleet forever. The 10th of April 1963, 220 miles off Cape Cod, Massachusetts, USA. The USS Thresher is a new kind of nuclear powered submarine, more advanced than anything that has come before. Like all new warships, she needs to be tested. After undergoing lengthy sea trials and months of maintenance and upgrades at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, she is heading out to sea for post-overhaul trials, including a test dive to a depth of 1300 feet. This is to ensure everything is working as expected before returning to full duty. Commissioned in 1961, the USS Thresher is a nuclear-powered, fast-attack submarine made to locate and destroy Soviet submarines and ships. Thresher was the lead ship of her class, designed during the Cold War. The sub measures 85 meters in length, and its method of propulsion is a turbine powered by a nuclear reactor, giving it a top speed of 33 knots, or 38 miles per hour. Her depth is believed to be around 1300 feet and has a crew of 129, consisting of 16 officers, 96 enlisted sailors and 17 civilian technicians. It is equipped with four torpedo tubes and can fire an array of anti-ship and anti-submarine torpedoes and rockets. Unlike older electrically powered submarines, the nuclear powered Thresher can remain submerged and at sea for greatly extended periods of time and has much superior performance. At the time, USS Thresher represents a new class of submarines more advanced and capable than anything else that came before it in the US Navy's arsenal. Accompanying the submarine is the USS Skylark, a submarine rescue ship which will support the mission by maintaining contact with them and being on standby in case they run into any issues. The Thresher's crew begin the diving test, where they will descend to a depth of 1300 feet. Submarines control their depth by managing their buoyancy, whether they float, sink or stay at a certain depth. That's where ballast tanks come in. To dive, it lets seawater into the tanks, making it heavier. To surface, it blows compressed air into the tanks to push the water back out, making it lighter. By carefully adjusting the amount of water and air, the submarine can maintain a specific depth. The system is reliant on a series of valves, which ensure the reliable operation of the ballast system. Thresher slowly dives in small increments, pausing every 100 feet of depth to check the integrity of all systems as they travel downwards in a spiral underneath Skylark to remain within communications distance. As they reach a depth of around 1000 feet, they run into an issue, the reactor shuts down and they lose propulsion. The sub angles nose up and begins to sink uncontrollably. They attempt to blow the ballast tanks to perform an emergency surface, but nothing happens. Skylark receives a garbled communication saying, Minor difficulties, have positive up angle, attempting to blow. Then silence. At the depth the sub is at, they are well past the rescue capabilities of the Skylark. As desperate as they are to do something, if the submarine can't surface, they are powerless to help. On board the Thresher, the crew work to try and bring the dropping vessel back under control, but nothing's working. The sub eventually sinks below the maximum depth it was designed to withstand, and even deeper, when, upon reaching approximately twice the depth it was designed for, the structure can't hold any more, and the vessel implodes, instantly taking all 129 crew members with her. How does a state-of-the-art nuclear submarine just fail and sink to the bottom of the sea, succumbing to the pressure of that great depth, and becoming the worst submarine disaster in US history? The cause would turn out to be a cascade of failures. The Navy launches an immediate investigation involving deep sea photography and an analysis of her design and operational history led by top officials. 
They locate the wreckage, scattered across the seabed in thousands of pieces at a depth of over 8,000 feet. Their findings suggest that the disaster likely began with the failure of a salt water piping joint in the engine room. These joints had been silver brazed, a technique later shown to be less reliable under high pressure compared to welding. In fact, earlier tests had revealed potential issues in roughly 14% of tested silver brazed joints, but most were not deemed serious enough to warrant repair. This wasn't the first time such a failure had occurred. In 1960, the submarine USS Barbell experienced a similar joint failure during deep diving trials, leading to the flooding of her engine room with over 18 tons of water. The incident was alarming, but it didn't lead to major changes. Months later, the ballistic missile submarine USS Abraham Lincoln had additional silver brace failures. Despite these red flags, the risks weren't fully addressed by the time Thresher went to sea. In Thresher's case, it's believed that high pressure water from a failed pipe may have shorted out electrical systems, triggering a reactor shutdown. This would have immediately cut off propulsion, leaving the sub dead in the water. At that point, the crew attempted to perform an emergency blow of the ballast tanks in order to quickly surface. However, this system also failed. This was due to excess moisture from the air tanks, which had then frozen inside strainers for the valves, blocking airflow and rendering the emergency blow ineffective. Tests performed on a similar submarine confirmed this failure to happen under similar conditions. Following the loss of USS Thresher, the Navy revises their operating instructions and alters some aspects of their submarine fleet's design. These changes include faster reactor restart procedures, installation of air dryers in ballast systems, and a stronger emphasis on flexibility in emergency protocols. But most importantly, the loss of Thresher triggered the creation of the SubSafe program, a rigorous safety and quality assurance system still in place today. Since SubSafe's implementation, the US Navy has never lost a single SubSafe certified submarine. The loss of USS Thresher was a devastating tragedy, 129 lives lost not in combat, but in the silent service of peace and deterrence. But because of what was learned, every US submarine that sails today does so with their legacy built into its very hull. Subsafe was their memorial, a promise that such a tragic loss, as of 2025, has never, and hopefully, will never happen again. If you enjoyed this YouTube documentary, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future episodes, and give it a like rating for the time and effort I put into making it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.